MMORPGs live and die by their dungeons and raids. And while the Riot MMO is still shrouded in mystery, if you're a fan of this channel, you know how much we like to push the boundaries of speculation and formulate what, at least in my humble opinion, are some of the most intricate, well thought out, and honestly most researched theories for the future of the Riot MMORPG. In this video, we are going to talk about the potential dungeons, raids, and most importantly, bosses that we may see in the Riot MMORPG. But before we get too deep in speculation about these specific bosses, and trust me, there are many great ones, I figured it would be good to start with our feet firmly planted in reality by taking a look at what the team has said specifically regarding dungeons, raids, and the champions, as well as their theory on how they may look within the MMORPG. First, we'll look at a conversation between Xenogenic and Greg Street, also known as Ghost Crawler. Xenogenic had said, I really did not enjoy leveling in Lost Ark whatsoever, compared to MMOs, it was fast to get to endgame, yet still too long for what it was. But I'm actually really enjoying the endgame. Did the 8 player abyssal dungeons last night and they were awesome. To this ghost crawler responded, what is the optimal design for number of players for a dungeon? Asking for a friend obviously. Xenogenic had responded by saying Lost Ark does 4 for standard dungeons and 8 for raids. He also said 3 has always felt too few for me. 4 to 5 feels like the right mixture of enough people that it feels like a great Group, but not too many. To me personally, and I think 6 plus starts to make grouping inconvenient. Greg had responded by saying that on WoW we felt that it might be 6 given the ratios. And when he says ratios, he's specifically talking about tanks, healers, and DPS, meaning that for every one tank and healer, there's 4 DPS. Next, Ghostcrawler was asked, or I guess more accurately told, please make the rating enjoyable. This is the only thing I ask for. Enjoyable rating with cool, complex bosses and fun rotations. Rest of the game can be tailored, however. To this, Greg Street responded by saying he would be crushed if he failed on this. Meaning, they want the rating and dungeons to be absolutely amazing and, well, I guess basically confirming that they will be in the game. He also went to say that I don't want to get into the specific features yet, especially not just over Twitter like this, but anyone that knows me from my WoW dev days would know that I love dungeons and raids as a player. Here he goes on to say that when you kill a big dragon and all it drops is some ingots and scraps, that it's not really delivering on the expectation of receiving cool loot at the end of a dungeon or raid, which is something I personally agree with, and I really actually enjoy getting the nice new big sword from the end of the boss, rather than, you know, getting some gems or something and having to go back to town and having a 5% chance to craft it. I'm looking at you, Lost Ark. And last, I wanted to read a quick quote from Greg as well about the champions and how they'll fit into the Riot MMORPG. Now, now, first off, I wanted to clear up any confusion that you guys may have, because I've noticed in some of the comments on my other videos that people are excited to play different champions within the game, and unfortunately for you, and it's just not going to be the way the game's played. Now, the champions will show up within the game, but we're not going to be playing as the champions. Instead, we'll be fighting along them or fighting against them. And here's Greg's quote that kind of backs up that idea. So the champions are the cornerstone of our IP. They have to appear. However, we also have a lot of them, and we want to do right by them, more than just a cameo. So it might be some time before anyone's favorite shows up within the game. So let's get into the fun bits and take a look at what champions may be bosses and where we might find them and in what dungeons or raids and which regions within Runeterra they will probably show up in. But with that said, let's keep in mind what Greg said about the champions themselves and how we're probably not going to see all of these, at least at release, and we'll see them slowly rolled out through content patches, expansions, DLCs, or whatever content content update cycle they decide to go with. One of the largest looming threats to the world of Runeterra is the Void. The Void is a force of insatiable hunger, wading through the eons until its masters, the mysterious Watchers, mark the final time of undoing. Deep, underground, in the abyssal darkness, it is believed that the first great Void creatures to walk the surface of Runeterra now lie dormant and unseen. Now, it's hard to say exactly where a raid or dungeon that is void related may occur, but given that they kind of are in every corner of the known Runeterra world, I think we can see some dungeons here and some dungeons scattered over there. But if I was to guess where the raid would be, I would assume it would be in the southern lands of Ekathia, known as the Rupture. Some of the bosses that we may see in this theoretical raid would be Velkos or Belveth, or even Cho'Gath, one of the 
oldest champions from League of Legends. That said, the Void is kind of its own realm and will always be a potential threat to the denizens of Runeterra. So I think it's incredibly likely for us to see more dungeons and encounters throughout the life cycle of this MMORPG. Next up, we have the Shadow Isles. This cursed land was once home to a noble enlightened civilization, previously called the Blessed Isles. However, more than a thousand years ago, an unprecedented magical cataclysm left the barrier between the material and spirit realms in tatters, caused by Runeterra's very own Lich King, known as Viego. Now the Shadow Isles are permanently shrouded with a black mist, and the earth itself is tainted by dark sorcery. Any mortal who dares to venture into these lands will have their life force stolen away from them, which in turn attracts the insatiable, restless spirits of the dead. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this sounds like the most epic buildup for one of the largest patches or DLCs, ultimately reaching a climactic finale with us facing up against Viego and his minions. Now, aside from Viego himself, we may see other champions such as Thresh or Hecarim and even Callista. Personally, I am so incredibly excited to see what Riot Games decides to do with the Shadow Isles. It has just infinite amounts of potential down there, whether it's new zones to explore or dungeons that we can fight more lesser known bosses in, or even just an epic raid. Just imagine preparing your raid group in the docks of Bilgewater, spending time hanging out, joking about things, getting yourself on the ship and riding on over to the Shadow Isles to conquer these bosses. It sounds just way too perfect and honestly I'm huffing copium at this point. So let's move on to the next area. Now this one isn't tied necessarily to any specific area, but kind of the entire Valoran continent. Twice slain and thrice born, Mordekaiser is a brutal warlord from a foregone epoch who uses his necromantic sorcery to bind souls into an eternity of servitude. While he is currently dead, he is reigning over the afterlife and conquering that too. Conquering and tyranny are deep in Mordekaiser's blood, and it wouldn't be the first time he was brought back to life. In fact, it wouldn't be the second time Mordekaiser was brought back to life. So I think it's fair to say that there's a good chance he may be brought back once more to try to conquer over Noxus and all of Valoran. And that's of course where we come in to save the day by slaying him once more. Another boss we may see in a potential Noxus raid is the undead juggernaut known simply as Sion. Sion was revered in Noxus for choking the life out of a Demacian king with his bare hands, but denied the peace of death. He was resurrected to serve his empire once more. His indiscriminate slaughter claims all who stand in his way, regardless of allegiance, proving he has retained little of his former humanity. With crude armor bottled onto his rotten flesh, Sion continues to charge into battle with reckless abandon, struggling to remember his true self between the swings of his mighty axe. Now, I don't know about you guys, but a Sion Mordekaiser raid is going to be a difficult one as these two creatures are pretty much unstoppable through death alone and will have to be followed into the death realm to be fully dealt with. Now, if we travel a little bit further south into Zon, the sewer and sludge filled depths of Piltover, there's a decent amount of creatures down there that I think would easily make at the very least dungeon encounters. But there were two that definitely stood out to me. First, we have Urgot, who was betrayed by the Noxus Empire for which he had killed so many. Bound in iron chains, he was forced to learn the true meaning of strength in the Dredge, a prison mine deep beneath Zon. Emerging in a disaster that spread chaos throughout the city, he now casts an imposing shadow over its criminal underworld, raising his victims on the very chains that once enslaved him. He will purge his new home of the unworthy, making it a crucible of pain. Now, this is just a description given to us from Riot Games, but I mean, crucible of pain just sounds like a dungeon name, right? I could see queuing up for a crucible of pain to kill this boss. It, it just makes a lot of sense. Now, another champion that I think we might even just see in the same dungeon as Urgot would be Warwick. Warwick is a monster who hunts in the gray alleyways of Zon. Transformed by agonizing experiments, his body is fused with an intricate system of chambers and pumps, machinery filling his veins with alchemical rage. Bursting out of the shadows, he preys upon those criminals who terrorize the city's depths. Warwick is drawn to blood and driven mad by its scent. None who spill it can escape him. I mean, just mechanically, as far as bosses are concerned, I could see how if someone gets hit by a certain ability that makes them bleed, he gets latched on and has 
has to follow them around the room. There's really so many great ideas here and I could literally spend hours upon hours and hours upon hours talking about it. And that's kind of what we do over on Twitch. So if you like this content and want to talk about it some more, head on over to my Twitch channel and make sure you follow me there too. Now, the last one I want to talk about is a little bit different and I don't even think it's going to be a dungeon or a raid necessarily, but I want to talk to you guys about the Darken. With the addition to multiple Darken being added to Legends of Runeterra, it's quite obvious that Riot Games has a hard-on for these corrupted god warriors. The Darken are a villainous race of fallen god warriors imprisoned in sentient weapons that appear across the land of Runeterra. They've been seen as far north as the Freljord, while many reside in the southern areas of Shirima and Nikothia. Now, there are far too many of these weapons or imprisoned god warriors, I guess, scattered around the world of Runeterra to fully list every single one of them. But I did want to talk about a potential idea that I think would make a lot of sense and add a lot of depth to the world. And it's the idea that we can summon these world bosses across the land by piecing together weapons by either collecting them or following a lengthy quest chain, culminating in an event where we all gather together in the world to conquer these super powerful corrupted god warriors. I don't know. I feel like there's so much potential for bosses in this game. It's actually insane. Most of it's already created and it just needs to be implemented in the game. However, they do decide to do it. I fully trust this stack team to make us one of the most immersive and exciting raid and dungeon experiences ever presented to us in any MMORPG. Now, I did have some honorable mentions. We have Trundle and the potential of a really cool troll raid, right? We've got demons such as Fiddlesticks or even Evelyn. Even Lysandra up in the Freljord. The possibilities are endless. So this is where I turn it over to you guys. What champions do you think would make really awesome potential bosses in the future Riot MMORPG? Leave your comments down in the section below and who knows, maybe they'll show up in the next video I make. As always, if you guys made it this far, it would mean the world to me if you hit that free subscription button, liked the video, and come join our Discord as well, where we are constantly theory crafting, playing games together, and just kind of preparing for the Riot MMORPG. So thanks again for coming out, watching another video with me. My name is Spun, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.